sweet. Well, we'll get started, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. It's going to be fun. Um, kind of been going through the book of Ephesians the last few weeks. But just have a drink and uh, just enjoy the presence, the glory. <laughs> so much more than intellectual information, thank God. <laughs> so much more than getting all of our doctrines right. Um, yeah, so Lord, we just we just love you in this place. We just drink your presence we acknowledge the full glory of God covering the earth covering our being flowing out of us you living through us as us Lord we're just uh, just so honored and ecstatic woo, 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 to be caught up in a reality beyond words and beyond information Lord but an experience of you and experience of your glory, Lord. So even right now, Lord, we just release angels and uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We just enjoy what we have. We enjoy all the fullness that we have in you. <laughs> oh, I just want to just release, like in this place, just over your physical body, just complete health. You just sense just electricity, divine energy flowing through you is like, uh, as we read these words that uh, liquid love would flow through your veins, that you would be energized, that you would be able to uh, even supernaturally experience and do things you've never been able to do. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. just been overwhelmed uh, recently just by the reality that it's so much about the love and the joy and the peace and uh, <laughs> yeah just leave it at that but <laughs> even though we're doing a, a, a class we're gonna give some good information it's like it's just all about the presence it's all about fruit. Um, I was talking to a friend last night. It's like, sometimes you're like, I don't even want to teach anybody stuff because they're so glorious. There's so much beauty on their life already. It's like, I don't want them to get the idea that I'm trying to correct them when they're filled with the fullness of God right now. <laughs> but the only reason that I continue to, to share is that there's so many people that go to sleep every night feeling depressed, feeling inadequate, feeling oppressed, and that this truth actually brings liberation or, or a knowledge of the liberation that you already had. So I don't know if you've ever experienced you meet so many glorious people and you're like, I don't have anything to say like that could add to your gloriousness, <laughs> you know? And, uh, but you know, a lot of times you've been awakened to something and uh, there's so much love and glory coming off of them, but they haven't realized it yet. So they're not actually experiencing even the beauty that you're experiencing off of them. Does that make sense? <laughs> so you're like, whoa, you're so amazing. And, and they don't feel that way. So anyway, that's my little preface. <laughs> so whenever you study the Bible, it, it can be dangerous. <laughs> you're, you're in danger of being a, 
uh, pointless. Or, or even worse, uh, just turn it into more arguments. You know, it's like somebody said there's been more murders because of this book than any other book. It's so weird. <laughs> it's like God's love letter to us and we've turned it into a, a legal document to argue over. <laughs> so all that being said, the context of reading scripture is like to reveal the beauty and the glory of all creation. And so any other like way, any, you know, if you're quoting a scripture passage for any other reason than to reveal the beauty and the glory of whoever you're talking to or whatever you're talking about, then you kind of lost the context, you know. <laughs> so, like, I mean, the Bible's a really like annoying or boring or even oppressive book if you don't have that context, you know. How many people are like, I don't... You know, get that book away from me, you know, <laughs> for those reasons. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just love, you know, reading it in the intoxicating glory. And especially, um, so today we're starting Ephesians chapter 2. But uh, I love the book of Ephesians because it's revealing things in a, in a more clear way, I think, than almost any other scriptural book. It's like... It just gets right to the point, like we were talking about last week, like the meaning of life, Christ all and in all, the, the culmination of the fullness of the times that he might gather together everything in Christ, like the unity, the union. And uh, so it gets right to the, the center, the center of heaven's Twinkie or whatever. <laughs> And so I'm just going to continue on that vein. I'll, I'll read the end of chapter one and start going through chapter two. And uh, I just think, you know, encourage you if, if you're watching or if you're, you know, you want to get into it, just lay your eyes on these verses, man. And, and uh, because your confidence isn't just in the fact that you had a good uh, experience that one time, you know, that you felt God's love one day or I had a good meeting, but uh you're actually living in a union that scripture completely re reveals and affirms and uh, that there's been generations of prophets and mystics before you that have seen this stuff. So it's not like uh, you're not alone. And your confidence doesn't have to be based even on your own uh, experience. So the end of Ephesians 1 and leading into 2, it says, He put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so meaning... Uh, there's this God, man, Jesus, in whom all of humanity is included. And uh, when, you know, you've always heard it said that we're the body of Christ. And uh, so literally, like this scripture is revealing the manifestation of the fullness of God's dream, God's destiny to have a man be the fullness of everything, to have a person, to have a human being be the fullness of all of the things in existence and that's why I, you know we'll say hey there's angels in your belly you know there's all the kingdom all the cosmos all the universe is living inside of you um, <laughs> so whenever you you know hear Jesus is the answer you know or Jesus is the main thing it's all about Jesus that's true and and Jesus reveals all of humanity Jesus is the new you like you you and him are one so it says he he put everything under his feet and then gave him as head over all things to the church so the God of the universe now belongs to the church which is his body so now the church is the God of the universe the fullness of him who fills everything it's like a, a most amazing mystical message <laughs> I 
there's so much beyond this physical realm that we're sitting in. <laughs> That's why I don't give a rip if there's two people or 2,000 people here. <laughs> because I'm caught up in a mystery, like a realm, a, a world that's like, ugh, I thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm experiencing things just by breathing, just, just as I exist, just as I walk around that are the mystery that all the, all the prophets of every spiritual tradition have longed to look into. And I've been given it all as a free gift living inside of me. It's crazy. <laughs> His body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Just feel yourself full of the Godhead. Full of the Trinity. So this is where Ephesians 2 begins. It says, uh, it, end, it ends at the place where it says the fullness of him that fills all in all. So you're caught up in the Trinity. You're in the divine embrace. You're, you're captured. You're, you're, <laughs> you're beginning to realize that all the power of God, all the love of God, all the joy of God, is encapsulated in your being. And then Paul dares to even uh, go deeper in the description of it. <laughs> and he said, and I'll just read a few verses and then I'll get into it. But uh, It says, You were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. So, I just love this book, man. Um, I love exploring it because uh, there's so many times when we, you know, it's like you don't you don't want to read the Bible when you're not like feeling juice on it, but you also like you will feel juice on it because it's a normal part of life to like be involved in, and reminded by our forefathers that have gone before us, the apostles and the prophets that have seen visions of Christ. And like what I see here and what Paul's writing is such a clarity, first of all, that you realize that there was a time and still if your thoughts aren't uh, on the glory and on Christ, you can still manifest a, a, a completely dead lifestyle. You know what I mean? Like, it's really key to understand that there are uh, realms that you can walk in that are completely uh, illusory or illusion realms. Um, just dead, like, life, you know? 
and every one of us has walked in it, you know, to acknowledge that and then uh, to acknowledge that we needed help. Like there's always, I mean, in still on a daily basis, it's like, I need help, dude. <laughs> like I can't awaken on my own. I can't begin to like walk in in some new realm. I can't manifest any of these things. I need to acknowledge that if there's ever a, ever a time when I'm walking in independence or reliance upon myself, it's going to lead to what it says here, d death and trespasses and sins, the spirit that's now working, the sons of disobedience, um, a lot of bad stuff, right? <laughs> And so, like, th this was the purpose of the law, um, the whole Old Testament, right? The purpose of it was to reveal to us, because in your daily life, sometimes people can get caught up in just, uh, oh, you know, this this is all there is, and, there, um, you know, whatever, this is all life is. It, maybe it's not so bad. Maybe I can find ways to just kind of exist and live in this dead realm, you know? And the law came to say, look, like, you are going to destroy yourself. You're destroying the world. You're, it's like not, if you're living in independence, it's not like, oh, you know, not really a big deal. It's, a, it's like, uh, it, it brings death. Like, by nature, it brings wrath. Like it brings wrath upon the earth. It's brings, it, bringing destruction. And so the law brings you to a desperateness for something else. Like, oh my God, like something has to change, right? Like, like this world, it's not okay to just live in destructive patterns. Like even it might feel like, oh, well, you know, I'm not as bad as somebody else, you know, or, or whatever, or I'm not causing that much destruction, but it's like, there does have to be a realization that of of the negativity that you were causing in your independence that you would be open to receiving a savior and so with all our like talk like in in this gospel we're set telling everyone you're perfect you know you're perfect it's not a, a declaration that empowers them to continue to live in destructive patterns you know because we're acknowledging, listen, independence li brings destruction, but you don't have to live independent anymore. You've been created as a new creation, so we're pointing to a new world. You know, we're pointing to like an amazing new thing that you can access right now. You don't have to live any, any longer in those, you know, in that death, in that destruction. But, you know, if you become self-satisfied in in a, a lifestyle that of like what it calls here, you know, the children of wrath lifestyle, <laughs> sounds pretty scary, or the sons of disobedience, uh, or under the prince of the power of the air, it says, <laughs> like, there is a lot of destruction that happens. There's a lot of like, it's, it's not a... It's not like this message is just coming to say, oh, everybody keep living the same way that you always used to live in your old you, you know? <laughs> and uh, verse three gives you the root of that, actually. It says, all this destruction and all this death like came from living in the passion of your, the flesh, carrying out the desire of the body and of the mind. So it's pretty interesting. If you're living mostly focused on the body realm and the mind realm, that's where all this destruction comes from. If you're just concerned about like what the Sermon on the Mount says, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, what you shall wear, you know, then uh, that's the realm of destruction. Or if you're just concerned about uh, this thought realm, which is the, the knowledge of the tree of good and evil, what, what's good, what's bad, balancing it out, or basically having control of your own life. If you love... You know, if you were a control freak or uh, you love being in control, which pretty much most people do, you want to be in control of your life, that's actually the knowledge of the tree of good and evil, There's it, which brings destruction. There's such a better way, which, it, you, you know, it sounds crazy, but it's being completely out of control, <laughs> but controlled by the Holy Spirit, 
in a wild, passionate, like, existence that we were all made for, right? <laughs> in absolute self-control, but by the higher self, the true self, which is Christ. Whoa, 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 whoa. So anyway, uh, Ephesians 2 starts to jump into it, but bringing a, a reminder, which also then uh, glorifies the grace of God here in just a couple of verses, but a reminder that, dude, you were completely dead in trespasses and sins. Like you were like, it, it's a hopeless case. Like not, uh, not the true you. The true you is always been co-seated, united with Christ, but the independent you, that the part of you that thought, hey, like I can make this on my own. I can do a great life on my own. I can uh, rely on my own strength. Now, it, it, it's, it uses a couple terms here that uh, it's worth mentioning, you know, because it does say sons of disobedience or children of wrath. But like we've talked about before, as if like the devil could ever be the true father of anybody, right? The devil can't create anything, so there's not actually like, you know, real children of the devil out there. But they're called sons of disobedience or children of wrath because they took on a false identity. There's a couple places in scripture where it says sons of the devil and like the the guys that don't like, you know, the the perfect message or the union message or grace or whatever will come and say like, oh, you know, see, like some people are just sons of the devil or something. It's like, no, everybody's a child of God, but some people have still adopted a false identity. It's simple enough. You can do a study on it if you want to, but uh, it's just worth mentioning there. As if the devil is your true father. Ha ha. Devil ain't got no kids. <laughs> Another triumph. A lot of weird doctrines out there, though. Anyways, uh, whoa. So, um, but before I move on, just just summing up the what I, what I was saying there is like there does have to be a complete distaste for the old world, a complete recognition that like this old stuff like is disgusting it's death it's decay it's wrath it's like it's ugh, it's hatred it's filled it's like it's just it's just revolting it's like there has to be a, and that's the whole point of the law was to bring you to a complete disgust of that old world that old independent self-existence if you still got it's and I, I believe that's why it says in first john if anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in him if there's still this connection uh where you're like you kind of still enjoy messing with independence or whatever or you're like you know you're still holding on to some rational like knowledge of tree of good and evil idea in your mind it's like uh God's just going to keep revealing the end of yourself. He's going to keep revealing to you how much that fails. So if you want to keep holding on to it, then God's not going to be like upset with you. I think that the, by nature, children of wrath, there is more like just a wrath of, you know, maybe yourself or a wrath of like some lower realm experience. But in Christ, God revealed that he's always loved mankind but you're going to be in some weird, confused state if you want to keep holding on to, like, independence. It's disgusting. <laughs> and it just brings confusion. So that's why I uh, just receive this love of God. Receive the new identity that he's expressing to you. Receive, like, a completely new world. It's the truth. It's the true you. It's a, uh, it's such a beautiful realm. It's it's worlds different. You get to live out of control, wild, amazing, beautiful life out of your mind that you don't really have. It's so good. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we, we, we go on. I'm just going to keep reading here. Uh, Ephesians 2, 4. But God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead made us alive together. He caused us to be alive, not by a conscious decision. He made everybody alive without their, even their knowledge of it. <laughs> 
by, it says, by grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ. So, ugh. I mean, these are like the meat of, you know, good, uh, whatever, Christianity or something. Which, I don't even care if you call yourself a Christian, but... <laughs> is the expression of even while you were still locked in these old mindsets, and this is what brings you confidence, even if you're like, oh man, I just had a day where I was like trusting in the old me or something, you know? Like I just had a, a day where I was locked into the death and decay for a little while. Well, God, without your choice and without your decision, already established a new you, raised you up and seated you with Christ for no other purpose than to just be awesome to you for the rest of the ages. <laughs> I love verse 7. So that in the coming ages, like, you know you're going to be alive for millions of years. And your only point of existence is that God can show you kindness. That God can just make your life really awesome for billions and billions of years. Like, that's your purpose. <laughs> like, <laughs> So, I mean, just late, just, there's so many still, you know, times we get offended with God about things. Just go back to this verse, Ephesians 2, 7. So that in the coming ages, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards you in Christ Jesus. Like, <laughs> uh, his whole point of saving you wasn't so you could work for him. Praise God. is isn't so you can, like... I don't know, whatever you thought you were meant to do, the whole point of it is that he can, like I said last week, you could be a trophy bride. <laughs> He's just gonna buy you like, you know, new cars and take you on vacations and dress you up and give you gifts and shower you for, not just for like the next, you know, few days or few years, but for the coming ages. <laughs> <laughs> that he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards you in Christ. More than even the things that he gets to give you, you get to be inside of God, experiencing all the virtues of the glory, experiencing all the things that your little emotions are trying to seek for in earthly things previously. The fulfillment of all that in the very presence and glory of God. So in the midst, basically this is expressing what the cross expressed. This is a description of the cross. The cross came to say, while you hated me, while you wanted to kill me, I'm giving you all the riches of heaven. Never gets old. you wanted to destroy everything and live in independence I co-seated you together with me on my throne and gave you everything for all the ages to come well you thought you were a son of the devil <laughs> I made you alive By, verse 8, by grace you've been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It's the gift of God, not a result of works that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. I mean, these are the fun, you know, classic verses of just pure grace revelation. Now it does bring up works there. It says you are created for good works, right? And then it qualifies it saying that God prepared. So there's already works. It's like, this is why you're still gonna manifest a lot of really good things. Like you're gonna, you're gonna see amazing things happen in your life. You're not just gonna lie around in a couch forever, although that's a lot of glory on it. Um, I mean, maybe some people will. 
But like, it's not about that's that's clearing up that whole thing like about the rest. It's not about doing nothing. It's about doing nothing of your own independent energy. You're gonna manifest a lot of really awesome things. Like, some of us are gonna be like appointed as kings and rulers of nations like Jesus talked about cities you know what I mean like it's like if you're faithful with one city I give you ten cities right there's some people that are gonna be like literally like given divine downloads of wisdom on how to like you know govern nations and stuff you know what I mean like really govern them with a with peace and beauty and servanthood and not oppression like that's amazing like you may have crazy destiny things like but the point is you're going to be so enraptured in the midst of it that the divine energy is going to be working through you it's not going to feel like work it's not going to be independent energy so it's literally like someone that's possessed you know most people only have a concept of possession when it comes to demonic possession but any true christian is actually possessed by the holy spirit you're possessed by another spirit, and it's meant to feel that way. That's why some of these people look so weird, like something's going on inside of them. Now, it's not like demonic possession where the spirit just, like, does cra such crazy things that it hurts you or other people. It's a love possession where you're, like, carried along by a spirit inside of you that's doing things, and you're like, I don't even know what's going on. That's these works that he prepared beforehand that you would walk in them. That's a, I love that term walk in it. It's like, but when I, when I see a picture of it, I see it like almost like a hand puppet. You know what I mean? <laughs> like God, it, you're walking it, but God's walking it inside of you. Like you're going to do some amazing things, but it's going to, you're going to be carried along. You're just going to be like, whoa, what's going on? Like, I'm just like, you know, Jesus is wearing you like a glove, you know, <laughs> the gloves just kind of belong for the ride. The glove's very involved, like, the, that, that, that analogy breaks down because you're way more valuable to God than, like, just a glove, you know, but, <laughs> but there's something about it, dude, the possession of the new works of God, the, the, the work, the good works or the God works, I like to say, because they're something that's way beyond what someone could do in a natural capability. It's like, I love, uh, you know, this quote could be discouraging, but I, I like it when, when a couple of Chinese leaders, a uh, church of the, from China came over to America and uh, they asked what, what are some of the things he saw when he came to America, what was the most amazing things and one of the Chinese leaders said, most amazing thing I saw was what the American church is able to accomplish without God. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, okay. <laughs> There's a lot of things that man, man can do in his, like, you know, just in his independence. And it looks really big and whatever. But, dude, imagine what the works of God are going to look like. People possessed by God, dude. There's guys able to build mega churches. And, I mean, most, I mean, I don't, I don't know any of these guys individually, so I can't say. But you can definitely feel on some of it that it was all built by just personal ambition. You know what I mean? How many numbers and how much money you can make off of it. Imagine, like when there's people possessed by God, <laughs> entrusted over cities, being faithful with one city, and all of a sudden 10 cities comes into their, like, domain. Ugh. I mean, that has happened historically. Um, just look at the life of David. You know, David had such, such success, like, during his life. There, I mean, he was... Uh, him and his son Solomon were like the richest people on the planet, like leading, I don't know how many people, but nations just by the favor of God on their lives, you know. And that was in an old covenant context. So I don't even know, dude. I just, there's God works, man. Like I'm, I'm expecting and we're, and whoa, 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 whoa. But, you know, it doesn't, it's not like you're better if you're a ruler of a nation or you are just working at like a gas station or something like that. It really doesn't matter as long as it's God works and you're possessed. If God's leading you to work at a gas station, it's going to be the drunkest gas station ever. People that come pump their gas are just going to get touched by the presence of God and lives, you know, or whatever. Going to be changed and impacted or, I don't know, man, I, there's no uh, one picture for what it's supposed to look like. It's just God works, dude. It's like, 
the, and you are not going to care really because the greatest thing for you is just going to be the rapture and the bliss that you're experiencing from the fullness of the Godhead dwelling inside of you. La, 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 la. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway. The rest looks like many different things, but the rest is... You know you're in the rest, dude, when you just... When your relationship and your intimacy with the presence of God is refreshing every day. That's the rest. When the presence of God is refreshing you and your life, whatever you're doing, doesn't feel like work. Ha ha ha. Woo 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 woo. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Just feel it right now, you know, like uh, you are in the rest of God, and one of the privileges you have of being in that rest is that you get to trance out at any given moment. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the most life-giving person called you living in me. Trancing out. For we is we are a little. <laughs> we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before him that we should walk in them. Therefore, remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what was the circumcision. So he's a, he's addressing right now. He's about to address the idea that. Uh, of Gentiles and Jews or the modern day you can say believers and unbelievers or anybody that you thought was an outsider. Remember at one time you were Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what's called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ and alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Now, this can be confusing, right? Because it's like, oh, it says that one time you were separated from Christ. But you got to be convinced throughout the rest of Scripture that you were separated in your minds. And, uh, or also separated by the revelation of that day. Because in reality, no one's ever been separated from Christ and that's the gospel. <laughs> but it's been perceived that way. And that's kind of what he's addressing here is like a lot of people thought there were special people like the Jews or the chosen people or whoever's chosen. And uh, Paul's addressing, listen, what Christ reveals through the blood is that everybody that thought they were separated uh, were, it was an illusion. Verse 14, for he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments. 
expressed in ordinances. Hallelujah. You're not justified by rule keeping. And he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace. Might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. <laughs> For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So you're no longer strangers and aliens, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Now, that, again, like a lot of this can seem like separation talk, but he does enter into our illusion and talk to us. We thought that there were people that were more favored by God. We thought there were people that had a special access. But the, the revelation of Jesus is the revelation of the ages, correcting any wrong mindsets, correcting any illusions we had about God. Look at Jesus. Like, if you're like, I don't understand the God of the Old Testament or I don't understand why this happened in my life, Look at Jesus, like the revelation of Jesus brings clarity to you. A God that when everyone was hating him, he expressed love. A God that reveals, says in his body, reveals one new man, reveals a unity. Because it's really, it's really key, man. Um, I, I talk with uh, one of my friends who hasn't come up in the Christian tradition. I've been talking to him often and he's like, you know, one of the things I often see in Christianity is this sense of duality. And uh, it's really key for us to see that in Christ or what Christ reveals is no duality, is no, even when you're talking to God, like, are you talking to a separate person? Do you, do you perceive a father out there or even God living inside of you but kind of separate from you? Because uh, <laughs> like the end of chapter one says or the middle of chapter one, it's like we are the, his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Or back to chapter one, verse uh, 10. As a plan for the fullness of the times to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. As if we ex are expressing a duality in our so-called Christianity, it's just not the teaching of Christ. Like Christ expresses a union. There's no separation. That That's what gets so crazy about like talking to God. Sometimes you're like, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> still recognizing like persons within the unity that's why i do love the trinity if god is one and yet you can still have communion and conversation within the unity but if you're expressing a duality it's that's where all of those independent breakdowns come from so i just want to address that here it's like christ verse 16 says that he might reconcile us both or all the Believers, unbelievers, Jews, Gentiles in one body through the cross. So you get to see everybody as one. You're, you're, wow, wow. You're like, you're no longer living. It, it eliminates the ability to live like just, uh, you know, accumulating possessions for yourself or concerned about your own destiny. You all of a sudden become possessed by a love for everything and everyone because you see everything as you. You see everything as God. <laughs> it says in the last verse of chapter two, in him you are also being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Like he's just giving all these pictures to to reveal the unity. The picture of the temple, all of us being joined together as living stones, like with God in the temple, us being like yeah, 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 yeah. So I just encourage you, like, in a, in a view of the universe as one, the universe. Uni meaning one. 
<laughs> Christ revealing a whole structure being joined together, a whole one body, one person, one, one reality, one spirit. Verse 19, you are no longer strangers and aliens. You can say that to anyone. There's no, there's no more strangers. There's no more outsiders. Like we begin to treat people like you're my family. Everybody's part of the family. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> the picture of no duality just brings so many like new views regarding yourself. Who am I? What what's going on here? What am I even perceiving? Like what? Ugh, like <laughs> Who's looking out of my eyes right now? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. What are these thoughts going through my mind? What are these emotions? Whose emotions are these? You get to have the emotions of God. Whoa, 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 whoa. You get to have the thoughts of God. You get, you're seeing the sights that God is seeing. If God's enthroned in heaven and inside of you, then what are you experiencing? It's so uh, wow. it's so key for us, uh, especially those that grew up in the church or had some understanding of like the Bible or whatever, to to stop, you know, envisioning God somewhere out there, um, to stop viewing ourselves as like a even as like you know sometimes when you're worshiping you view yourself as like coming before the Lord or something. <laughs> it sounds nice and everything. It might sound humble, but a lot of these are like more uh, like pagan idol ideas. Like you're bringing your thing before the God or whatever. But like Christ reveals something completely different than that. Like you're not coming to worship God. Like your worship is being in union with God. Like letting God express Himself through your life. Like that's worship. It's a big deal. Like, and if you grew up in the church. You've done it so many times, especially if you were like a good little Christian boy or girl, you know. You've done it so many times. You've gone to pray and you envision God on the throne somewhere. You, or you come to worship and you view yourself, oh, I'm bringing my thing before God, you know. And it's sweet and everything. God's not like upset with it, but it's just not helpful for you. Like, <laughs> because... What Jesus reveals, what this gospel reveals, is a completely different type of life. Uh, <laughs> there, there's like a New Age guy that put a book out called uh, Human Race, Get Off Your Knees. And uh, I, I, as offensive as that might seem in some level, I, I felt a lot of glory on it, on that phrase. <laughs> like, we've felt like we need to and there's nothing wrong with like, if you want to pray in whatever prayer position you want to pray in, you know, you want to pray on your knees or whatever, but there's been this idea that I need to, I'm like scum coming before God, or I need to humble myself before God. When Jesus came to serve you, and that's, that's the scandal of the ages, but you have to allow yourself to experience that scandal. You can't, uh, 
there has to be a consciousness within you that, that he's the servant of servants. Like he came to serve you so that you would know what true service is, but he created you in his image and likeness to have fellowship with. Like, I don't want my wife approaching me like always just like, it's not, it's not healthy. She's always like groveling up to me like, I just want to touch the hem, you know, I just want to touch the hem of your garment. It's like, that's kind of a sick relationship if that's kind of how you, if you think that's cool, that's, n- that's not God, you know. God's, God's like, I wanted you on the throne with me. Like, not even just with me is too far away. Like, I wanted you to be inside of me and I want to be inside of you. Like, whoa, like. <laughs> ah! Jesus creates one new man. <laughs> And that's when you begin to, to experience the divine life that was always yours. When you allow yourself to be scandalized by the fact that God is thinking his thoughts through you. God's emotions are flowing through you. You have holy emotions. You have, whoa. Not if you're in the do-it-yourself mindset. Not if, you're, not if you're in the mindset of trying to, you know, live in independence. And those things, you'll live in an illusion realm or, or whatever. But what Christ gives to you today, right now, is to be able to recognize him in you and as you. No more of these pictures of like a God somewhere over there or I'm approaching him or I'm pleasing him. He's already pleased forever. He's a, whoa. The type of, of course, God loves worship but he also created you to love worship. Like you worship because he worshiped you. I mean, it gets crazy, you know, this union, it gets, I just give you full permission to explore the, the, the implications of a union with God. Be scandalized by it, but don't let that scandal uh, stop you. <laughs> don't let it be too weird or too good to be true for you because if you were, raised in almost any religion you were taught all of these weird separate ideas even in the way you pray and the way you worship the way you whoa all these separate things that these that that bring that naturally bring a lot of breakdowns because the whole issue of the old fallen world was a separate consciousness was a separation consciousness was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, so, which represented a mankind wanting to, to do it on his own. This is all about the possession. This is all about the union. That's what, this, that's what I love the book of Ephesians. It's like so much union language. You know, one new man, like Christ, the body, fullness of all in all. Like you, you are all together a dwelling place for God. Like... No one's strangers and aliens, like there's no separation, like all of this language to speak something different because the world after the fall got this idea of a God that had to be appeased, that had to be pleased, that had to, you got to approach, like it's even that idea like, well, we're only approaching by the blood of Jesus, like who are you approaching now? You're one with God, like do you think, and it's all been done, like do you think you still have to like bleed this blood every time or something. The blood was for your conscience so you would feel okay with the scandal. <laughs> Ugh. Hallelujah. Cool. Well, I'm just going to end there, guys. Uh, but, man, you can just, just, you can just pray with me a second. And, uh, whoa, just close your eyes or keep them open. (laughs) Bow on your knees if you want to or get off your knees. (laughs) But, uh, 
Lord, we just thank you for the scandal of this gospel, the scandal of a union. I thank you that we're experiencing it right now. That we're not even getting to know you, Lord, but we're experiencing a, a communion, a union with all things going on inside our body. That's blowing our mind. That's bringing a woo, 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 something far beyond like a, a just a mystical message. It's like, wow, wow, it's all things. It's everything. It's, it's you in me, me in you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sha la 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 la. I just pray for my friends that we would this week see and experience the eyes of God looking through our eyes, the emotions of God flowing through our emotions, the health of God being our body, even transcending our body, causing our body to transfigure. For we are in the very likeness of your glorious body. Woo, 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 woo. You're not going to be limited. I just declare for everyone here, you're not going to be limited by the old you anymore. You're not going to uh, just, you're not coming to terms. You're, you divorced the old you. <laughs> you're not coming to terms with just living and existing as, oh, this is all there is. No, I thank you, Lord, that there's a transcendent glory right now. There's a, just a quickening into the true reality, a quickening into all the fullness that you expressed in Christ, all the fullness of what you died to reveal. All the fullness of this union. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Let your glory be your glory.